What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News. And I got to talk about the war I just got the pleasure of seeing yesterday. And I know it came on Sunday, but I have to recap it. I have to counter punch it. It is between Lamont Peterson and Sergey Lipinets. This was a classic war. This reminds me of the old school Tuesday night fights or Friday night fights that I used to watch in the co main event or the main event where you had like two of like maybe B level fighters or C plus level fighters and they get in there and give it their all and this was no uh, this was no exception. Um, Lamont Peterson came out quick, started started following with the jab. He started pumping that jab early, you know, followed by some right hands. He was setting it up beautifully. Sergey, you know, stayed where he was. He had the shortest of the reach, so he had to stay close you know, at the expense of taking, eating those jabs and right hands. Sergey would grip to the body and would, he follows with the left hook. He likes to do that. And uh, he stayed in there and he got his own punches off. Now, everything really changed in the third or fourth round simply because Lamont Peterson, being the warrior, being the attacker that he is to the body, started ripping shots to the body. You know, it starts, you know, he started to commence the breakdown. He started the breakdown process of trying to break down Sergey Lipinets with his body punches. And one thing about Lamont Peterson, he does have massive body, nasty hooks to the body. We've seen that in the Amir Khan fight where, you know, when Amir Khan fought in his backyard. And it's ironic, it was the same referee, which was Harvey Dock in this fight. You know, um, these guys were both going to the body, though. Okay. But Sergey was looking to counter, to do what you call a catch and counter or a catch and shoot to uh, Lamont Peterson. And he stuck in there and um, and at first he could not land because Lamont Peterson was able to keep holding that telephone. You know what I mean? He was able to keep holding that telephone or to counter. Lamont Peterson, he missed or he eluded a lot of those punches. He avoided a lot of those big shots by Lippinets early, okay? Um, Lamont Peterson had some beautiful right hands that were in that fight. The fight, again, was back and forth, though. back and forth action with these guys. And, you know, they meant business. Somebody was going to get knocked out or we were just going to have a classic war, and that's what we had. Now, Lippinets was able to land those counter shots to the head while Peterson went to the body. That is one of Peterson's bread and butter. And I guess Peterson felt that Lippinets didn't have that same steam on his punches, but he was wrong. Lippinets did catch him square in the middle of the nose, which disembobulated him, then later on caught him, caught him in the chin, then put him down. You know, he hurt Lamont Peterson. Um, and Lamont Peterson should have changed his game plan up, but he didn't. Because again, if you're convinced in a war, you know you're hurting the other guy. It's kind of hard to, you know, just change up the game plan like that. You know what I mean? But again, it was a good fight. It was a war. It was something worth watching. You know, I put it up there with like, um, uh, Mickey Ward, Emmanuel Burton, or Emmanuel Augustus. So, you know, that's what he used to be called back in those days. But that was another classic war. You know, fights like this, I love. I love more than high caliber fights because, you know, these fighters that are on the higher caliber, you know, they don't get hit with big shots like that. You know, it has to be timed and calculated just right for them guys to get to take a punch like that. You know, when you're taught, when you're dealing with with uh, B minus or C plus fighters like we had in the ring uh, Sunday with these two guys, you do see those flaws, but you do get those punches that connect. You see the entertaining blows that excites the crowd. You know that an Arturo Gotti fight. Arturo Gotti was not the perfect fighter, or, or what should I say, not the perfect boxer, but he was, you know, a dedicated fighter. And the way he fought, it was perfectly with his style, you know. Um, and, you know, I got to take my hat off to both fighters. You know, afterwards, you know, Lamont Peterson, you know, said it's time to hang up the gloves because he thought that he should have beat someone like Sergey Lipinets, you know, and Lipinets, especially coming from 140, 
you know, but we can't forget that Lamont Peterson was at 140 himself, so he's not considered a huge welterweight. So I don't really think that he should have or she should be that hard on himself for wanting to hang up the gloves. But of course, you know, he knows, he states that a lot of guys, because of their feel, they feel fine, they still continue fighting, he won't go down that road. But, you know, again, if this is the last fight, you know, I'm glad that no one's really seriously injured because they did take a lot of punishment. So if that's in his best interest, I feel he should do exactly that. But anyway, that's me wrapping up the fight cap and uh, I mean the fight study and recap of this fight. Forgive me of the sun. It is a pain in the ass, especially when the sun comes out. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think about these two guys fighting. This is Kurt Deville with Counterpunch Boxing News. You guys been counterpunched. <laughs> Peace.